for the tool time today. Tool time today. We're doing Coopscape. Coopscape. And so this came out like August. Yeah. That's not that long ago, right? Mm -hmm. Kubernetes hardening guidance. And and it was, you know, national security report. And when I first came out and I was like, I was guy, I I wanted to be skeptical. It is a bit of a read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but not to be dismayed, it's a, there's a lot of examples. So it, that's really yes. quite cool. It's uh, it's well done. I, I wouldn't say so. I took a quick skim of, of everything and all of the the rules and stuff like that. It's an amalgamation of all of the different security guides that you would see at things like Aqua and Stack Rocks and Red Hat and the diff, you know all these different companies that have it. It's very succinct. You can tell that they've brought it together in a very readable way. I think. Um, mm. But it's, I don't think there's anything here that you would go, oh, if, if you're in security and you've been around Kubernetes, nothing here jumps out at you like this is groundbreaking. It's just their guideline for how to do it. So anyways. Yeah, fair point. Uh, well put together and it's a way for an American organization to enforce yeah. good practice, right? By saying, mm -hmm. we're the NSA, now you, now you have to do it. Um, forget CIS benchmarks. So <laughs> this company... Yeah, Armo, who previously I'd never heard of, uh, created this thing called Cubescape, uh, rocketing up in the stars, the first open source tool for testing if Kubernetes is deployed securely as defined by the Kubernetes hardening by NSA and CISA. And like the first open source, it just came out in August. I mean, I don't yeah. doubt it. It, it was almost first. like it was released at the same time, like then it was coming or? Yeah, it does make you think like, it, how does it have 3,000 stars, a tool that couldn't have existed before the guideline? I don't know. But anyway, nevertheless, I want to try it. So I did exactly that. I blindly copied this installer like a good security person, and I, I ran it, but I'm going to do it again. So it's, and the installer figure, actually, I love clever installers. I'm always dubious with if someone says, Hey, here's a website that will make you secure. Just curl this script and run it. It's like a total, well, yeah. what's it? We haven't done the bingo anti-pattern, right? Don't don't tell security people to get the security tool by running a script. I mean, it's it's remote code execution, a, a, a success achieved. Yeah. So I'm a moron. I <laughs> looked at it, I ran it, and I I now have Coopscape installed on my Mac, which mm -hmm. and probably half a dozen other forms of spyware. Um, but it's it's pretty straightforward. Like the, they don't really download the, you can do a lot of the steps manually, but you don't really have to bother. You just say Coopscape scan. And I've already kind of got it here because I'm not going to take any risks. There only, the, this made me laugh is it's future proof. Um, so it says Coopscape scan framework. The out oh, other, uh, I got it to print out the uh, the frameworks available, of which there's one. It's NSA, huh. so there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing else you can put after that that's going to do anything. So that's all you can do. It didn't explain. I was a little critical of the instructions because it doesn't actually explain what's it scanning. Because Kubebench, it actually wants to run on the master node. Mm -hmm. And actually has settings to say, mm -hmm. where am I? Am I on the master? Am I on a worker? What's my context? And it also has a way of trying to figure it out itself. Yep. Whereas this is checking remotely. It's using kubeconfig. Mm -hmm. Because I, it, but it doesn't tell, it didn't tell me that. I just assumed that it was going to use kubeconfig. Yeah, if it's running on your local, if it's executable on your local host, you're PC, it's gonna, that's what's gonna happen, right? Well, but even like when you look at the instructions, it just says, do this and run it. But I guess because of prior experience with other tools, it's like not all tools just use the kubeconfig. Some want to run, so I didn't know. I just made an assumption. True. I think they could they could document it a little bit better. Uh, so I am running, let's be, let's be clear about this, from last, uh, a few weeks back, if my uh my vpn hasn't kicked back in so this is the this is the sivo environment 
where I've got oh, nice. installed. Uh, I got my open fast. I got Falco. I got sock shop in there. Two sock uh, shops. Plenty to be. Pl- do I? Oh, I do. Or is it just split up? I think it's just split up. Maybe it's just split up. Yeah. 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 It's just it's listing in a really weird way. Uh, yeah. And uh, I've actually ran Kubench somewhere in there. So I've got the open. Kubench it's on de- it's in, the, well. in the default namespace there. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So I ran Kubench just to see what it would report before we got here rather than take risks. So running the running that, it's going to, and I, I mean, I've got the proper kubeconfig, so I'm, I have admin. So this is basically letting it do whatever it wants to do. Mm-hmm. It downloads the framework definition. Pulls all the objects. Pulls all the objects, and then boom, it's done. It's fast, right? Yeah. Uh, and I miracle of JSON. That. Man, look at all that. Not a lot bad. A lot failed. All resources, container host port. So you can go up and we can take a look at some yeah, of them. Yeah, so resource that. policies is going to be a big one because one of the biggest things that I see on anything that gets downloaded open source into a cluster is they don't want to put resource limits and requests because they want it to work and they don't want to crowd out your nodes, right? So yeah. Memory and like CPU the, limits, they're probably going to be almost non-existent on a lot of your resources. I, with, with the exception of the ones I made. Yeah, which, the ones you made <laughs> or the Kubernetes uh, default daemon sets, things like that. There you go. Uh, percent success. That's actually pretty cool. 20%, yep, 20% actually passed. I have no root containers. I was pleased to, pleased to see. And secure capabilities. It's not a lot of checks. Like if you compare it with well, anything, pick pick your tool. This has probably the least amount of actual um, 20, I think it is, maybe 20 checks. Yeah, 20, so it's there. But yeah. pretty your, thorough, actually. Your, your ingress and egress resources are a little rough. You probably should throw in some network policies. Eh? <laughs> I have no network policies. Yeah, yeah. that failed everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, yeah, I haven't got... I could just whack a default deny in there and a set of those, and I would solve that problem. Now, Although you, no one would be able, be able to communicate. Can you export so that... these resources in some sort of way from the CLI? It would be pretty cool if this could be exported into just like a XML or. Um... Yeah. Oh, I mean the the results. Yeah, is that possible? You can. With the CLI? You can. Actually, yeah, you can. The there was JSON, and I think I also saw it does like a JUnit XML. Okay. So that. Because most like AWS just grabs that and makes it pretty, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's, it that's does. Awesome. Yeah, it does the right formats uh, that you would want for machine consumability or visibility by known cloud standards. So I was pretty happy with that, and I got to tell you, I'm loving these. Yeah, those are the big ones. I mean, minus it's, the you had two that failed. Yeah, Falco obviously needs right, full yeah, permission uh, yeah. for privilege. And cube system. A security tool. Like yeah. this is the ones you knew was gonna fail. Yeah. Um I it's love it's interesting I'm, that it picked up the Sivo one too. It yeah. picked up the storage Sivo interface. Supplied. The Sivo well, storage. I think it's container storage interface node is what that daemon set stands for. So you can also you can exclude namespaces. So I could have excluded kube system. Kube system. Yeah. Um I didn't do that, but that's a command line parameter. And I think even, I think they probably even give you that as a suggestion, which I didn't do somewhere now, in, the, in the instructions. Can you point this at YAMLs just in a repository or does this have to oh. be the Kubernetes API? I can do that. Oh, that's awesome. Because now, now, now it's, that's, now it's that's part that's of a ours. pipeline, right? Now it's part of a pipeline. And it uses the destination context. Hmm. So you see, I still failed. Yeah, no network policy. I passed everything, which is great because this is the one I used in my experiment to pass everything. Hmm. Um, but it knows it's going somewhere that has no network policy. Right. Smart. That's so, awesome. I, that was pretty cool, right? I did, um, I played with not having a kube config to see if it would work or not and i also played with like doing that and it says no workloads so it's it's looking through 
the yam like it, it doesn't really fail yeah. slop sloppily it makes sense yeah empty list of workloads no workloads found yeah i wonder what yeah. the engine in the background is i have a feeling it's ova it is yeah because basically what they've done uh, is yeah. they've just grouped a bunch of policies under a specific thing or under just in the cli it's probably like viper like all your go cli command lines and then opa in the background that's running and a nice little yeah. output yeah uses a docker you know, build for the cli build Co yeah there it is cobra and viper for cli flags nice solid tool it is and what's you know I, what's amazing is just everything's so new <laughs> yeah they're still updating it like that yeah they're, they're the go report a plus nice it is pretty impressive that what they what they've made here and then oh, so this is where there you go yeah you can that's where they've given you the example to exclude namespaces which i then promptly ignored and because i wanted to see everything but yeah it is for a first release of an open source tool there's the j unit it's amazing and it's got like, Helm support, offline support. Helm support, so yep. you can run it in your cluster. I mean, because really, you're just containerizing uh, a CLI, an executable, right? So you could technically run that in a container in a pipeline or in your cluster as like a job yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, like, we deploy Chekhov as a job, or as a cron job that yeah. runs in the cluster, but it's similar. Yeah, it's it's couldn't fault it i just think like i look i kind of look forward like i i see it's been powered by that right but wait what does it say powered by oh opa well yeah. it's by by opa and it's it's driven by this but it'd be interesting to see like a, as a contender in the infrastructure as code space it was pretty advanced out of the box like for i i really respect tools that do like very little but but they didn't do, rush it it's like do one really thing well. really well yeah. really well yeah it's it was um it's it's really hard to do one thing extremely well instead of trying to bite off everything they i mean looks like they need all the functionality that you need out of the box you got to report build it into your pipeline i mean if you're a small team running on open source this is something that you could just hey let's run this report against our dev cluster and we're gonna go and fix half half of these in two weeks and then the other half in a month right like it's a yeah it's a really useful government. tool to, yeah. to do like the without having to spend uh, you know a ton of money or get into calls with some big security tool that's out there so totally. are we going into q bunch Honestly, well i just run it quickly because kubench is there kubench the way to run Kubebench is super easy. You can run it. You can download a, a pre-built executable run on the node, or you can run it as a job. And the job.yaml is in the GitHub repo. You just clone it, deploy the apply-f job.yaml, and then wait. And it takes like a, a, about as long as that took. And then you get your warnings, checks, fails. It's gives you uh, create a PSP. It gives you uh, suggestions. Which mm -hmm. actually that didn't do. Like giving help and smart information is yeah. probably something the other one could add. But this is just straight up CIS benchmark. So mm -hmm. um, it's I got mean, more checks. But yeah, the nice thing about the the new CLI of Cubescape is you have the guideline that you can just go pick up and read. It's like, hey, you need to have ingress and egress block. It's like there is a whole <laughs> hardened guideline right there for you. Yes, I, yeah. I mean, I get it. You want to be on the command line, but. It's like use those in tandem and you're, you'll be fine.